Let's talk about some cool tools I use. Uh, and if you don't like them, um, you probably smell like Axe body spray. Uh, Oh. All right, this isn't some review or competition or some ranking. Uh, these are really just recommendations. I just like these, so. So back in my day, we had these things called paper and a whiteboard. You could write stuff, draw stuff, you could do whatever you want. It was crazy. And then technology came out with their perfect fonts and their perfect shapes. It had a lot of people thinking, man, I sure miss the days of terrible handwriting and terrible shapes. Technology makes everything too perfect. So what do they do? Go back to pen and paper. <laughs> no, that's stupid. They created a tool to make everything look like handwriting again. I present to you, Excalidraw. I love this tool. It's so good. You can make diagrams, you can take some notes, you can draw stuff, you can even work with other people. It's great. The handwriting is not terrible, you can actually read it, but it's also not perfect and soulless like computer fonts. It has its own charm. Hey, hey, editor sloth here, and um, while I was editing this video, Excalidra announced that they changed their fonts, and now they look so much better. Thanks, Excalidra. I love it. It's gaining a lot of popularity, so a lot of people are starting to use it and that makes me really happy. I just love this tool. It's free, which is the most important thing to me because I'm broke. It's open source so you can see the code for it and you can contribute to it if you want. Oh, and did I mention it was free? You can even add it to your own projects. It's pretty cool. And they're constantly working on fixing bugs and making new features. They're really transparent about what they do. And it's also free. I use this tool a lot. It's an upgraded whiteboard, so go check it out. It's not like I have a whiteboard in my room. That'd be stupid. <laughs> The second tool I like to use a lot is Figma because it rhymes with Ligma. No, but seriously, Figma is an amazing tool. If you don't know what Figma is, it's a design and prototyping tool. It has a lot of other stuff. It also has its own little whiteboard thing, but it's kind of overwhelming to me. That's why I prefer Excaladraw because this is just insane. Um, it's a little too much features for me. They also recently just announced uh, slides. Now you can make slideshows with Figma, which is pretty cool. I don't use any of this. I only use the design part. It's mainly used for UI UX design. Now, if you're really interested in UI UX design, you need to learn Figma. Basically, everybody's using this. And if you're interested in something like web development or mobile development, I also recommend learning Figma because it doesn't hurt to learn design. <laughs> But Figma's awesome. It's nice, it's simple, most people can use it. I mainly use it to design and prototype projects because it's easier to make changes on Figma than in code because at least in Figma, I can just drag and drop or just delete it. While if it was in code, I would have to look for the component, change the CSS or the HTML. It's just a lot of work. Oh, and the most important part, it's free, kinda. Uh, there's some features that you can't use unless you upgrade to a professional plan. And uh, I'm not paying for that, obviously. And it kinda sucks, but you still get access to most of the essential features, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I don't know how long that's gonna last, honestly. Uh, they're kind of getting a little, uh, how do I put it? Mr. Krabs money hungry. Yeah, but as long as the basic features are free, I still recommend it. But if they ever remove the free plan, don't use fi <laughs> The next tool I want to share is Hostinger. Now what's Hostinger? Hostinger is one of the best platforms to build a website or to deploy your coding project. Wait a minute, this sounds like you're sponsored. That's right, I am sponsored. Okay, hold up, let me get into character to explain this properly. <clears throat> Hostinger has everything you need to build a website. If you know how to code, you can upload your terrible website's code to Hostinger and they'll host it for you. All you need to do is select one of their web hosting plans. This plan is ideal for beginners and for simple websites. And look at that, you get access to a free domain. And trust me, these are pretty expensive. Someone recently bought a domain for $1.8 million. Who would do that? While with Hostinger, you can get one for free. I personally like the business plan. I'm gonna explain why in a bit. And if you don't believe in serverless because you think you're better than everybody, don't worry. Hostinger has you covered. They have VPS hosting. This is for more experienced users who need more control over their projects. And don't think I forgot how much you love Linux because Hostinger loves Linux too. They let you pick your Linux distro for your VPS. Sloth, what if I don't know how to code? Well, luckily, for you, when you get one of their web hosting plans, you can use Hostinger's website builder. <laughs> I can't keep doing this voice. You can make a website in minutes because Hostinger uses AI to help you make your website. All you have to
have to do is explain what the website's gonna be, and once you finish, AI is gonna create the website just like that. If you don't like how it came out, that's okay, because you can still use the website builder to customize it. And if you listen to me and got the business plan, you also have access to AI tools, like an AI writer that's gonna write SEO-friendly text, an AI logo generator, and an AI heat map. This lets you predict what your users are gonna do on your website. So if you're interested in trying out Hostinger, click the link in the description below, or when you're in checkout, enter the exclusive coupon code CODINGSLAW, and you'll get a 10% off discount. You're welcome. <laughs> Next tool is Codium. It's an AI assistant tool for programming and it's pretty awesome because it's free. I have some mixed opinions about AI assistants, mainly for learning how to code. I might make a video on that, but I still use this tool. At the end of the day, it's really helpful. Codium has features that every other AI assistant has. So it has code completion. It uses your code base as context and it also has chat. But the main appeal is that it's free. No, like seriously, it's free. You get unlimited completions, unlimited chat. It's amazing. They're really generous because Copilot is like 10 bucks a month. Now, funny enough, they have a thing called, how is this free? And I was curious. They make so much money off their enterprise plan that it's enough to fund everyone else's. And in their words, they say, we are committed to having an industry leading free tier forever. So yeah, that's pretty sick. I mainly use Codium for boilerplate code when I'm too lazy to type something out or just to give me suggestions or give me a reference of what I can do. And I've used GitHub Copilot before, and it's pretty similar. I don't see much of a difference myself personally. Yeah, so Codium makes me a 0.1x engineer. Very cool. <laughs> the fifth tool I like to use is called Beehive. What's Beehive? <laughs> <laughs> it's the newsletter platform that I use to build the greatest newsletter of all time, Sloth Bites. Sloth Bites has the news. Sloth Bites has the tech. If that didn't make you sign up for Sloth Bytes, I don't know what will. Oh yeah, and Beehive is pretty cool. They make it really easy to set up a newsletter platform. They make it easy to create the website for the newsletter. And they have a really nice text editor to make your emails look good and not boring, which is why Sloth Bytes look so good. Yeah, they have a lot of other features too. The people at Beehive must be working like crazy because every week there's some new feature. And if you ask them for help for anything, they'll respond right away. So if you're looking to make a newsletter, I strongly suggest Beehive and check out Sloth Bytes. Look, I love programming. I enjoy front end. I enjoy back end. Fixing bugs can be fun. I even like writing tests sometimes. But if there's one thing I hate, it's writing a readme file. It's boring, not fun at all. There's always the chance I make a typo on the readme. And now I have a bunch of GitHub issues saying typo fix. And now I have to make a whole new PR. It sucks. It's annoying. Sloth, do you really need a readme? Yes. If you want to make your project presentable or you want to make it open source or you want to collaborate with other people, you need a readme. The reason you need a readme me is so people can understand what your garbage project does, which is why I like this tool. It's called readme.so. As the website says, it's the easiest way to create a readme. It's a simple tool, but it helps me so much. It comes with these pre-made sections that a lot of projects use, and it lets you view the readme before downloading. This tool has saved me from a lot of typos and formatting issues. It's nothing crazy. It's just a markdown editor. Shout out to Catherine. She created this tool, and it's made my life so much better. Oh yeah, and it's also free. <laughs> The next tool I like to use is Eleven Labs. Wow, I use a lot of tools. And what they do is mainly AI audio. So they generate the AI voices like this. Hello, my voice is in so many videos. It has a lot of other features that I haven't tried. So uh, let's try them together. This right here is called text to sound effects. <laughs> They have dubbing. Programming is difficult. Yep, that's me if I could speak Japanese. Is it a little scary? Yes. Is it funny? Yes. Should you try it? Yes. <laughs> the next tool I like to use is Notion. Oh, hell no. Here we go. I know, I like Notion, okay? I like it. Notion is a well-known productivity app at this point. Sure, there's other tools, but I've been using Notion for a while and I'm too lazy to try something else. I also use it because it's for now for those of you who haven't been on the internet in five years, Notion is pretty much an upgraded Google Doc. You can build anything in Notion. You need a to-do list right there. You need a calendar right there. Kanban con Kanban con board. Bam. You just want to write some stupid notes. There you go. If you use other apps like Google Drive or GitHub or any of these, Notion integrates pretty good with them. If you want to make something more complex, you're on the wrong channel. There's tons of tutorials online showing you how to make cool stuff. You have a brain, go search up Notion tutorial. You have free will. Unless...
Okay. Oh yeah, and you can also collaborate with other people. But I don't have any friends, so I can't show that. Notion's pretty cool. Um, I think that's all the tools I want to show off. That's all I got. Why are we still here? That's all I had in the script. Oh,